Major funding for these programs is provided by grants from First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, SJP Properties, Murray Hill Properties, Bank of America, Greenberg Traurig, Allied Partners. Additional funding is provided by grants from Arbor Realty Trust, and Terry's Investment Partners, Athena Group, BRT Realty Trust, Burden LLP, CB Richard Ellis, City Habitats, City Investment Fund, Cushman and Wakefield, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, Herbert J. Sims and Company, Herrick Feinstein LLP, Helmsley Spear, Jackson Development Group, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Kilroy Metal Products, Massey Knackle Realty Services, M&T Bank, Madison Realty Capital, Marcus and Millichap, Meriden Capital Group, McSam Hotel Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Moynian Organization, Must Development, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal, Signature Bank, Sydney Fetner Associates, Sheldrake Organization, Stonehenge Partners, Studley, Triangle Services, Whitkoff Group, Extreme Contracting and Deconstruction. Hello, my name is Michael Stoll, host of the Stoll Report, Real Estate Trends in the Tri-State Region. The fourth largest city in the state, one of the greatest waterfronts, great roads, 24 minutes to Grand Central. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Yonkers. People don't know what's happening in Yonkers, what's happened over the last decade, and what's going to be happening in the next decade. Today, I have the people who are the visionaries, the people who are really doing things and planning for Yonkers. I'm fortunate to have the mayor of Yonkers, Philip Amicconi, <laughs> Arthur Collins, president of Collins Enterprises, and last but not least, a New Jersey boy who wants to be in Yonkers, uh, Mark Burson, the chairman of Fidelco. So, Phil, you were saying to me before... You were born in uh, the Bronx, and then t at two years old, you, you moved up to Yonkers, and you've been there your entire life. I've been there since then. I've been there for 57 years um, and spent an, an awful lot of that time as I was growing up in Yonkers. And I'm an engineer, so seeing what was happening in other cities and watching Yonkers announce plan after plan and nothing ever happened, great place to grow up but just a, a city that just couldn't get out of its own way for so many years, which is why over the many years it never developed its potential. Now we're finally in the process of doing that with so, the help so, of people so, like So him. let's talk about some of the developments. I know after a couple years ago, the phase one of your development. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we were designated as the, as the primary developer for the first phase of the waterfront master plan that the city had put together. And we sort of have a philosophy that any city that has a pro-business administration that has a master plan and has some level of financial incentives, we're interested in, in pursuing redeveloping in these cities. We don't do any greenfield development. And we got very quickly a working relationship with then Deputy Mayor uh, Amicone and um, started our construction uh, 2000 uh, for the first phase of a rental prop property and uh, has have subsequently built approximately 600 units there with some uh, some retail. And, and what we were saying prior to the show, which is really interesting, you know, you can, you're in a brand new, a relatively new apartment house, a complex, and you're paying basically $32 a square foot in rent, taking New York City, as opposed to doing the monthly over there. And that same apartment in, in midtown Manhattan or anywhere in Manhattan would be double the price because of the market rate rent. So, you know, that opportunity and, and the transportation is really valuable. So how'd the Jersey boy, you know, I know uh, this is not Frankie Valley show, but how'd the Jersey <laughs> boy make a decision to, to, to go to Yonkers? Well, it, it's, uh, we, we uh, had started, uh, oh, uh, 10, 15 years ago, um, re-examining uh, real estate opportunities and heading back to the urban centers. Um, I've been uh, tremendous involvement in Newark, 
Um, at the time that uh, we decided to uh, go after an RFP that was available in Yonkers, we were uh, uh, immersed in Bayonne at the Motby Peninsula, uh, the old military ocean terminal. Um, the Alexander Street project, uh, as then contemplated, it's probably about four years ago now, five years ago. Right. Um, and we joined forces at that point with uh, Strieber Brothers, Eccles and Rouse, who are known for transforming cities, uh, the Baltimore waterfront being uh, really their premier and, and uh, you know, base of operations. Um, and we together uh, uh, had a vision. Um, we're not successful that first round. Um, we're reapproached. Uh, Pretty simultaneously, the city coming to us and they, and us to the city, uh, because city had a vision of having a uh, minor league ballpark uh, in the community. Um, I own the uh, Bears in the Atlantic League in in New Jersey, and our partners, uh, Bill Strieber and his company, uh, are uh, uh, partners with uh, in this neck of the woods. Uh, Bad name. The enemies, the, the, the Red enemies Sox, by the Boston Red Sox. So <laughs> we've forgiven um, them. <laughs> it was uh, kind of the uh, it was baseball that brought us uh, back to the table, and we started uh, some planning and ideas. We took Let's talk about that development. I, I mean, you know, you've been there, as you said, your entire life, but this is a massive development which is going to transform two two separate sections of Yonkers. I mean, and now with the water, uh, with the ferry, you know, the, it's really interesting. So why don't the two of you tell me and my audience a little bit about it? Well, sure. One of the things that we were looking to do was uh, recreate the downtown. It had been the heart of the city for so many years, and it had deteriorated to the point where no good businesses were coming in anymore and the ones where they were just hanging on. So our idea was to bring more people down there, help those who were there thrive. And that's where the idea of a minor league ballpark and about 100,000 square feet of retail would be built right across from City Hall on an old parking lot. That's when we, we met with both Mark and Bill Strever. And their original plan anticipated also putting some residential, but the residential wouldn't be in the same location. And then a third partner came in with them, and that's uh, Louis Capelli. Well, I have to say that the three of them really did create a partnership, the likes of which we haven't seen in Yonkers, certainly in my lifetime. And when they came back to us, they said, we've reconsidered everything. We don't want to do 100,000 square feet of retail in a ballpark. We want to do a million square feet of mixed-use residential retail, hotel, ballpark, parking. Basically rebuild the downtown, and that's just phase one. That's a billion and a half dollars of investment, but our plan, their plan, is to go out to anywhere up to five billion dollars of redevelopment along the water, in the heart of the downtown, and in, a, in an industrial valley right adjacent to the downtown. Suddenly, the people of Yonkers started to realize that they should start thinking big, and that's exactly what's happened now. We're no longer talking about small, fit-in little pieces of development. We're now talking about rebuilding a city and growing it up, and that's probably the most significant thing we're talking about doing is growing up, not just growing out, because the sprawl doesn't work. We have too much land developed already in the city, but the heart of the downtown needs to get taller, create the density that will really enable all the kind of retail we want down there and be the attraction for people but, down there. But Yonkers, I mean, Westchester has a good amount of retail. I mean, in Yonkers, the other part, off the highway, you have the Stu Leonard's and the Costco, right? Uh, which is then exceptionally well. Uh, and then, you know, Cross County Shopping Center, depending on with the renovation, I think that will, will change also. Yes. And, and, you know, right now with Empire City, uh, the racetrack uh, with the uh, slots, is doing very well from what I'm seeing. So, you know, there there is development taking place and then there's Ratner's development also close by over there. And I and I think what you what your your vision and what you need is, you know, Yonkers had plenty of low income. So you need that working class or the market rate income uh, housing that you're trying to plan. That's right. And that's what they're bringing downtown. That's what Arthur's already been bringing downtown over the past six or seven years. That's what Mark and their partnership are bringing downtown. They're bringing in all different levels of income into the downtown where it traditionally it had been lower income, lower to lower middle income. Now we're having all levels of income and that creates a market for retail of all different types in the heart of the downtown, which hasn't been there for most of my lifetime. 
And that's why that's important. All those other projects, even when they did their analysis, including the Ratner project, said there's still room for a significant amount more retail in lower Westchester County, which is now the void that's being filled by their development. Right. I, I mean, look, everyone knows about Louis Capelli, what he's done in New Rochelle and what he's done in White Plains. And, you know, it's a natural, I mean, uh, the combination, because I know Bill Straver and, you know, what you've done in Newark and other places, it, it's really uh, a mecca uh, of what's going to happen. So let's let's talk a little bit more. Uh, 1.6 billion in the first phase. What is it besides the stadium that I'll be able to go to? Maybe you know. Well, I, I think it's uh, the the first thing is its scale. It's of the the scale uh, as Lewis would say. Uh, no one's going to believe the change to sign up in retail or to to commit to to live there at the the uh, velocity that we need them to to have successful projects. Thus we get five tower cranes up at the same time. So the, the, it took a big idea and it's going to take a, a significant uh, uh, move forward at once um, to, to change. Uh, the, the, um, the scale of it also requires, and, and uh, uh, we shouldn't forget to mention the fact, the commitment uh, of the mayor and council uh, to the kind of uh, uh, public assistance uh, to help fund the big idea because yeah, you have the deferred, talk, the deferred infrastructure that's... That, yeah, but let's talk on. about the funding. I mean, you know, this is, there's an infrastructure expense. There was an infrastructure expense when you did your first development. That's true, yeah. And you, you were saying, how much was that? Well, we, we a combination of projects, but we, uh, is no less than $150 million of Development, redevelopment, infrastructure. Right, you have a new library now. You have what else? Parking garage. Parking structure. The Esplanade Park along the waterfront, um, and uh, a developer for the trolley barn, right. uh, which is very important. What are they going to do with the trolley and barn? The it's most important thing was, I'm sorry. The most important thing was the MTA improving the train station, um, and uh, and getting the tracks repaired and so forth, and making making Yonkers an express stop. I mean, that was key. Right. It was interesting when Art first came to us and he said, "We've got." potential investors in their project, he said, but they have to believe that things will really happen that you're talking about. So what we did was we committed in our contract of sale to the, for the land, we actually committed to right. starting five major projects in the heart of the downtown within the stone's throw of his project before he had to put shovel in the ground. And I think that went a, large, a long way toward convincing your equity investors to invest in you. And we started those projects within right. four months of the time we signed that contract. And the rest is history. His first two buildings were built, and they're full. His new building, which will now give him a total of almost 600 units on the waterfront, I have no doubt that they're also going to probably be very successful. It's a great location. But we're also committed to being real partners with them, not just, you know, not just the rhetoric, you know, business friendly. I mean real partners, because they don't succeed, then as a city, we don't succeed. And it's as simple as that. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon, because uh, when I've done some shows on downtown Brooklyn and other places, people said, uh, why did people go to the Gold Coast, to Hoboken, New Jersey City? Yeah. It's because the city was not committed to lower Manhattan or to downtown Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And it took, you know, Metrotech, which basically was isolated. I mean, until recently, it's still isolated. You know, it's in, it's in downtown Brooklyn, but the rest of downtown Brooklyn, nothing has happened. Right. Now there's redevelopment taking place. You know, the, the only problem that we have, and that is a question I'll pose right now, we have a credit crisis. What effect is that going to have on redevelopment for you to build your next tower, for you to build part of this? We think if uh, things stay on course, meaning that the... Uh, infrastructure, the subsidies, and other things are there that uh, we actually will be in a positive mode that that uh, uh, by the time product is ready for market, uh, we'll be coming out of uh, the So the when, when, when is market? I mean, you have a third tower. When, mm -hmm. when do you plan to begin construction of your third tower? Uh, we hope within, uh, you know, six to eight months. Uh, that would be the, the goal, ten months maybe. But as far as the credit crisis goes, I mean, effectively, and Mark is doing the same thing. We're building into, you know, a, a market in New York that is, is I, I wouldn't say, um, isn't affected by the credit crisis. But there's plenty of capital out there. I was in Dallas last week at the Urban Land Institute, and 
There's plenty of equity capital that's looking there, for this There's kind of plenty thing. of equity capital. There, there's so much equity capital. I, I did a panel the essay, as I was telling Mark, uh, called The Credit Crisis Money for Real Estate, and I had four panels who were lenders who were talking, we don't lend anymore at this level, and then I had an equity panel. Right. And the equity panel said, we got billions That's and right. billions of dollars to, to invest. That's and right. then one of my senior partners of my firm got on and he said, but don't think these sovereign nations are making a decision yet to buy. They know when to come in. They're invested with all of us, but there's <clears> the right time. And you know, you, you look at it, there's definitely equity out there. And there's equity out there for residential rental. That's right. There's equity out there for retail. Correct. There's not equity out there. there, there there's one word has, has become a, a bad word in the industry. There's no equity for condos. Yes. Uh, condominiums right now are uh, are no no. Very tough. But housing uh, is needed. That's and, right. and we were also talking prior to the show. You have an office component in your building, mm -hmm. and there are other office buildings in Yonkers. What's the rent in Yonkers for an office space? Yeah, mid twenties. But, but let's look at right. this way. So you're in the mid-20s on rent. You take a company who can have their back office or something else, or you know, even people want to be you know, the small accounting firm, the other thing, they can go there. You can't find mid-20s. On the, on the uh, Manhattan Island, we don't find $20 a foot <laughs> no, anymore. It's, it, it, it's not there. Um, in Brooklyn, it's not in the tr maybe 25, 27. Uh, but it's not heard of, and you know. So you, you you look at all this, and you look at the development, and you have great roads, little traffic once in a while. But uh, you, you know, good. You know, traffic is good. Traffic there is good. There are people in those cars, and they shop, and they That's work, right. and they live. That's good for us. No, there there's no question. Um, but how's the city going to pay for all this infrastructure? Well, in large part for the project that we're talking about here. When Arthur came in, the infrastructure we paid for through regular geo bonds. We bonded it. We did over $150 million in downtown infrastructure because we needed to show the same kind of a commitment to our city that we were expecting him and anyone who came after him to show also. I uh, can't expect you to invest your money if we're not willing to invest in our own. So we did. Now, with the project that we're talking about with uh, Striever and Fidelco and Capelli, that project is also going to probably run somewhere in the area of 150 to $200 million in infrastructure. Much of that's going to be parking. We're looking to do that through tax increment financing. And that's, in my opinion, that's probably the best way to do it because we're only committing the future, a portion of the future revenues of their project, which wouldn't happen otherwise toward paying off the bonds. And the rest of the city's not at risk. What about tax abatements, inducements? What else do you do? Uh, we have a number. We, we have all of that. I yeah. mean, the programs that we have in place, we're on in Brownfield, so we're getting Brownfield credits, which has been obviously probably something you should. Do a we show are going to do a brown show. <laughs> we did a green show a couple of weeks. Did ago. a green show. Yeah, we did a green show. We also are part of something with the Empire Empire Zones, which allow a tax abatement for us. It's really a tax reimbursement or tax credit for real estate taxes. And without those things, the the, the these deals. So your can't operating be done. expenses are much lower because of these they inducements. Are. Absolutely. We also have an industrial development agency that's been very active over many years in inducing companies to come in and providing benefits from low interest to no interest loans as well as uh, an empowerment zone, a federal empowerment zone, which is only in a portion of the downtown, but it does happen to include a large part of the property that this, this one SFC And what's Business had. Week 2008? Bus we do this is our ninth year. I, 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 I saw this, so tell me about Business Week. <laughs> it's great. What it is actually is a week-long series of networking sessions for businesses, um, actually informational sessions with experts in their field on marketing and, and hiring personnel and training personnel and and all those different things that every every business from the single practitioner to the mid-sized business and maybe even large-sized business needs to know. Only instead of having to pay thousands for experts to come into your company, you could get a taste of it even and, and even more than that in sessions that are offered free by the city of Yonkers. The entire week is paid for by contributions from businesses. It's open specifically to businesses and then we often find that some of the companies are now doing business with other companies within no, the city. It's, a great, it's a great networking. I noticed that your company, and I think your company, were sponsors of it. Yeah. I even noticed Domino Sugar. I, I was a little surprised. Right there in Yonkers. I, yeah. I didn't realize. It's been there for 100 I, years you know, the, the people, refinery. You know, the interesting thing, I, I think very few people in my audience uh, would, would realize that the first elevator factory 
was built in Yonkers. The Otis, uh, Otis elevator factory, right. right. I think, it was 1864. And then that, when they moved and closed, that property was changed. Now they made the, the trains for the end. That's for where Kawasaki makes many of the rail cars for the path tubes for the Long Island Railroad and, and for New York City Transit. Yeah. Yeah, the, the subways, and they they every year they get it. Every time there is a contract, they get a significant portion of it, because not only is it local and therefore easy to get the cars back and forth, they're also a, a very good uh, manufacturer. They, and the entire car is manufactured in this country, start which, to finish. Which is interesting because yeah. you know when you talk about manufacturing, you would never expect train cars it's being true. manufactured in Yonkers. Yeah. I mean, sure. it's a, it's a I mean, I was. It's a phenomenon. So, what type of retail do you foresee in this development? I mean, if it's Capelli, it's going to have everything. I'll see a, a you know, a <laughs> big box, a Costco. I mean, I mean. No, well, I think I, a word I think uh, you know the heart of this so. is going to include the likes of a Target, uh, a Barnes and Nobles, a, a, a Stop and Shop. Um, you know, there'll be the health club, and, and you go but down. The, but this will be a vertical. Okay, as opposed to That's a lifestyle right. center. Well, it's 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 vertical and it's lifestyle at the same time because among the most important aspects of this is the daylighting of the Sawmill River, right. and uh, the around the park, uh, coming down Epperham and, and and then turning towards the river, um, uh, you know, right through Getty Square and and uh, the like is going to be this uh, river walk in effect. Uh, uh, and that's very, very uh, important. You know, the model, they call it San Antonio, but Bill has uh, been very involved up in Providence, uh, Rhode Island, and the like. And so um, the idea that uh, you'll come to town and stroll, uh, shop, see a game, uh, you know, possibly uh, so, so grab uh, a sandwich. Now, I hear, I know the baseball team. So is there, is there a possibility ever, you know, uh, in Long Island, you know, you have uh, the, the the hockey team. I mean, in New Jersey, you have a hockey team. Is there a possibility ever of seeing an arena being built in Yonkers? Great idea. I think so. <laughs> I think what we've got to do is prove the viability of the ballpark, which I have no doubt will be very successful. And then once that complex is done, I do see an arena at some point for a minor league hockey team, too. Uh -huh. You know, we're not in competition with the, the professionals, whether it's the, you know, the Rangers or the Islanders, Yankees and Mets. We can't compete with them. The problem is that they're so expensive that many people can't or can't afford I mean, it. These minor know, league clubs the, the, are great. These minor league, I, you know, as I said, I've had Marty Markowitz, and I'm happy you're on my show, the only two <laughs> political people I've ever had on the show. But, you know, what the, what the Cyclones does and, and the people love it. I mean. Someone told me I was listening to the new prices for the Yankee games next year. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, I'm probably going to do a show on sports, and then I'll have to scream at Lon Trust and everybody say, you know, the, the expense over there. But I, I think I could see that. Isn't there a Westchester performing? Is Westchester performing arts center? There is. Westchester has its own performing arts. Um, what we're doing downtown Yonkers, remember, we're almost 25% of the county population. And as you said, fourth largest city. And there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of venues that should be in the city which are not there. Uh, one of the things we will be doing is restoring a large theater in the heart of the downtown that's right now buried inside an old building, but it was one of the last stops before a place went to Broadway in the turn of the century. We're building a minor league Hello ballpark. Dolly. That's right. Hello Dolly uh, had its roots in Yonkers. That's right. Uh, and this yeah. theater is a 2,500 seat theater, full stage. You know ev everything you would see down on Broadway but it hasn't been active for probably 20 years. Wow. That's going to be restored. But, you know, I think this is part of the vision of, of, of a public-private partnership yes. where people do work together. And, and you, know, you, you know, I'm a New Yorker, and I've seen some good mayors, and I've seen some bad mayors. I mean, what Mike Blumberg is doing is, is dynamic, you know, but it's because he's a businessman. There's right. somebody out there who's creative. And, you know, as I said a couple of years ago, this is my seventh season, Somebody would say to me five, seven years ago, forget Yonkers. I don't want it. It's a tough oh, place. Sure. Nothing's going to happen over there. You know, and, and you know, there, there's this aura of, yeah, it's crime. There's no crime today. Yonkers no. Is, is, is fine, you know, and, and Westchester is such a, a great place. I know you, you, you know, you're in Stanford also, but it's a different market. And I think, you know, look at yourself and the visionary of what you've done in Newark. 
you know, with a lot of the development. So, I mean, th this works. So, what's next besides Mark's development? What else do you see on the horizon, yourself on the horizon? Well, we have four and a half miles on the Hudson River, the west side of the city of Yonkers. And most of that has been industrial in the, for the, throughout the history of the city. What we're doing as part of the redevelopment of the downtown is we're expanding from Riverdale on the south to Hastings on the north, and we will create a river walk, the likes of which has, has never been uh, seen in Westchester County. It'll be very similar to the Battery Park uh, Esplanade that walks along the west side of the, the city of Manhattan. We're doing that all, all along Yonkers. There will be residential, there's going to be a park, and that park, it may be 50 feet, 80 feet wide at some points, it may be 150 feet wide, but it'll create access to the river that hasn't been there in my lifetime. And it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be there in large part because of the investments of people like Art and, and Mark and others, because as part of their project, they have to dedicate that land to the city. It becomes city parkland. They'll build the esplanade. Then we'll take it over and maintain it. So we're creating access to the river. And you've seen the view of the of the Palisades there. It's you know it, it it's is better than anywhere else. I, I mean, but you know, it, it's you know I, I look at what has happened you know in Battery Park City. You know, or even when you you, you take a situation that when Sam Lefrak basically said uh, you know I'm going to Jersey City, and because there was a great opportunity. Yeah. And, and so it's really, you know, it, it's visionaries, it's people who want to work together, it's, and, and it has to be a public-private partnership, and they have to work there. What about restaurants? You were talking about there's some new restaurants there? Well, Peter Kelly's restaurant down on the pier has been terrific, and uh, it's, it's uh, made Yonkers actually a destination again. And it's interesting how many people, I'm sure, Phil, you've talked to these people come down and they just live on in Bronxville or Eastchester or something, and they'd come over and they'd say, "Well, I, we've this first I have we have never been down here, and they grew up in in Westchester, so it's been huge, and it's making Yonkers and, and bringing uh, people down." We down don't have much time. What about the racetrack now with the Empire City? How's that doing? It's doing well. Uh, the racetrack is right now all they really have is the track and the casino, but they have a hundred acre site there, and I know that they're looking to put together a plan which will incorporate hotel, retail, other restaurants. So in the end, it'll be a, a large mixed-use development, another one, and it's right on the New York State Thruway and uh, almost adjacent to the Cross County Parkway. So that's just another location where we're going to expand. So I, uh, all I know is you're going to, the three of you are going to take me to lunch or dinner at Peter Kelly's, and I'm going to go up there on Yonkers, and I'm happy that I've been able to discover for my audience after 175 shows uh, the truth about what's happening in Yonkers. I'd like to thank Mayor Phil Amicone, Arthur Collins, and Mark Burson. Next week, we talk about the guys who can give you equity. We have the private equity guys. See you next week. Major funding for these programs is provided by grants from HSH Nordbank and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, SJP Properties, Murray Hill Properties, Bank of America, Greenberg Traurig, Allied Partners. Additional funding is provided by grants from Arbor Realty Trust and Terry's Investment Partners, Athena Group, BRT Realty Trust, Burden LLP, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Habitats, City Investment Fund, Cushman and Wakefield, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, Herbert J. Sims and Company, Herrick Feinstein LLP, Helmsley Spear, Jackson Development Group, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Kilroy Metal Products, Massey Knackle Realty Services, M. N. T. Bank, Madison Realty Capital, Marcus and Millichap, Meriden Capital Group, McSam Hotel Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Moynian Organization, Must Development, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal, Signature Bank, Sidney Fetner Associates, Sheldrake Organization, Stonehenge Partners, Studley, Triangle Services, Whitcoff Group, Extreme Contracting and Deconstruction.